Hi, my name is Kimberly from Zeebman Development. Today I'm going to show you how to import data from BibPal into Razor's Edge using Importacular. So the first thing you need to do, go to the plugins area of Razor's Edge and open up Importacular. Select BibPal from the available data sources and click Start. Now you need to choose your BibPal import file. I've already downloaded mine from the BibPal website, but you can find it really easily by going logging into your account and going to the reports area. So, and then we'll start the import. We can see immediately we've got seven records to review. So at this point, no data has gone into Razor's Edge and we simply need to tell it where we want the data to go. And we can do that using the mapping template. There's a default mapping template set up for BibPal, but you can add your own or you can edit this one just by clicking on the little pencil. So let's take a look and I'll show you how I've set this up. So you can see the different areas, the different tabs in Razor's Edge along the top, and we can see the different areas within those tabs along the side. It's free to import into the constituent, the address, and the gift area. All the other areas you see are available at a low annual or monthly subscription, and just get in touch for more costs. So I've set the constituent up. When we open the mapping, we can see the Razor's Edge fields in that area on the left, and in the center it says source field name. So if you click on the drop down, that will show you all the different fields that are available from your spreadsheet. And you can map those to wherever you want to go in Razor's Edge. You can also choose the default value. So you can either type in free text, select a checkbox, or choose from a drop down here as well. Any areas that are obligatory in Razor's Edge, you'll see a little green tick on the left here. And so you'll need to provide some data for that, either via a source field or using a default value. So this one's pretty basic. I've just got first name, last name, and constituent ID. So let's save that. And then let's take a look at the address area. So I've got three different mappings here. I've got a postal address, an email address, and a mobile phone number. If we take a look at the address, we can see that I've mapped these to the address fields in my spreadsheet. I've also set this up as a preferred address by default. And I've set the type as home by default as well. I don't have a home type in my BibPal data. So in order to make sure that all this data comes in exactly as you would expect to see it and in line with your Razor's Edge rules, we can also set up some transformations. So for example, here we've got country. And if we click on the little settings tab next to it, we can see that we can change the text casing. So when people are entering data, they're often lazy about putting capital letters in or they type all in capital letters. So we can change that so it's proper case. So it will always have a capital letter and all the rest will be lowercase. But we can also change the actual data itself. So for example, if I've got data coming in in my spreadsheet that doesn't match with my Razor's Edge tables, I can transform it here so we don't have any errors in the import. So for example, if the country is coming in as US from BibPal, I can select from my drop down of countries in Razor's Edge and choose United States. And I can really easily add these for as many as I need to. And then when I save that, you'll see that this turns to green to show us that we've got some settings set up there. Okay, let's save that. And let's take a quick look at the gift as well. When we open up the gift, you'll see there are far more required fields in here than in any of the other areas we've looked at. So I've used quite a lot of default settings here, and I've used some free text, and I've used some drop downs. In addition, the fund is obligatory. So I've mapped this to my fund in BibPal, but if you don't have your fund set up in BibPal, you can enter a default. And anywhere where it says click to enter a value, if you select that, you can search from within your existing Razor's Edge data. So you could choose a fund and it will automatically map to there. So once you're happy with all of that, we can save that as well. And let's save and close that template. We're going to create a control report and this will just show us any errors that there might be during the processing of our import. And we're going to create a Razor's Edge query of new and updated constituents so we can just really easily find them when we finished our import. So let's, let's select continue. And this will take us to our review screen. Again, still no data has gone into Razor's Edge. This is a review of everything we're going to put in so you can check it before you commit it to your database. On the first screen here, we've got a review of all the data. We can see the action to take down the side. So it will either say create, which means it's a new record, update, which means it's found a match, or it will say decide if it's not sure. So here we can see the top record is a brand new record. 
and we can see a summary of her data. We can see that this row here is an update and the little link here means that it's a grid match. So it's found a match from within the data itself, so it's not going to create two records for that person. And finally, at the bottom, we found a match on Razor's Edge. So we can see it's set to update and we can see the constituent in Razor's Edge it's going to update here. If we want to check that constituent, we can just click on the Razor's Edge symbol and it will open the record for us so we can double check it. And if we scroll right across the end here, it will show us the kind of match that we've got. So here we can see this is an exact match and here we can see these ones are grid matches as we looked at before. If you think there's somebody on here who is definitely in Razor's Edge and it hasn't found them, then you can look that constituent up in Razor's Edge by clicking on here and search as usual. And then you can select a record to be updated from that place too. OK, so you've then got the tabs across the top that show you a drill down of every single data point that you're going to bring into Razor's Edge. So here's all the data you're going to put on your constituent tab. And anything that you can see that's in black, you can also edit on the fly too. So if you notice a spelling mistake, you can really easily correct it without having to go back and edit your source data and mess around with your spreadsheet. If we go to the addresses, we can see the full postal address here. And at the bottom, it shows us the different mappings we've set up. So this is our postal address. We've also got our email address and our mobile phone numbers here too. And finally, we've got our gift. So here you'll see all the different data points that are going to go into the gift area of Razor's Edge. And it shows you, obviously, all the obligatory fields as well. Once you're happy with all of the data, we can import it into Razor's Edge. But before we do that, we can also validate it. And this will just check any of your code table entries and your default values to make sure it's all going to go in as you would expect and not create any errors. So we tick this little box here, which is ticked by default, saying validate data only and click validate now. It will run through each constituent and check their data. And then we can see a little green tick for any new records and a little pencil for any updated ones. And we'll see a summary of the data here. So four new records and three updated ones. And we can also see this data in the control report. Once you're happy, we can close that, untick the validate button and import the data. I'm going to create my query so we can easily find those records and it will run through exactly the same process again as it does the import and again we can see a summary of the data we've imported there. So let's close this and take a look at some of our imported records. I go to my query that I've created, here it is. I'll just add some fields to the output so I can easily find those people. Here we can see the five records we've created or updated. So the top one's one of our new records, so let's take a look at that. So we can see all of the basic biographical and address data that we've put in. Here we can also see the email address. You'll notice that we don't have a gift here, and that's because all the gifts have gone into the batch. So let's close this and take a look at our batch. So we can see the input acular bid pal batch that we've created. And if we open it up, all of our data fields are there. So we just need to commit this as usual. And we're done. Let's go back to our query and open up that record again. And now we can see that the gift is there. If we open it up, we can see all the information's on there as expected, and I've saved the gift ID here as well. If we take a look at our updated record, so this is a record that already exists on Razor's Edge, you can see we've added a mobile phone number, but there was a home on there already, and we've added an email address. We've got an address here, but there was an address already on the record, so we've changed the new address to the home address and we've updated the old one to a former address. And we can also see the gift informations here as well. So once again, exactly the same as we saw before. So that's how easy it is to import your BidPal data into Razor's Edge. I hope that was useful. Thanks for listening.